AFTV brings you Man City versus Arsenal, powered by NordVPN. How's it going, people? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Box to Box. As you can see, I'm with the big man himself, my big six brethren, Big Steve in the building. What are you saying, Steve? You good? Yeah, man, I'm good. Got a bit of a cold. Been a bit busy the last few weeks all around Europe watching football. But uh, yeah, I feel a bit rubbish today, but I'm not going to miss this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I know you're feeling a bit under weather, but you've been enjoying yourself. You was out in Eindhoven as well. I, I, see, I see it on your Instagram story. How was that? Brilliant, mate. Yeah, brilliant. Um, got some good friends in Eindhoven. Always wanted to go see um, Ajax game. Um, it didn't disappoint me. Brilliant. You know, they do it different to us in, in England. Um, but yeah, they looked after me. Uh, they put me on the stand with all the lads. Plenty of dramas. Uh, new rule in Holland as well. If you uh, anything gets thrown on the pitch, the players come off. Yeah. And if you do it again, the game's abandoned. And on the Friday night, the Grand England game got abandoned. So the ultras of PSV uh, had to walk around the stand and tell everybody basically, don't risk the game. But you know what emotions are like. Two nil up. Somebody lobs a, a beer. The players are off the pitch, and then. Yeah, the poor guy that did it, he got dragged out. I don't know where he's ended up or even if he's still alive, but he nearly risked it. But um, no, they won 3 0. It was party time. And and I think they've got Champions League football for the first time in like five years. So they're, uh, they need the money. You know what I mean? They, 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 they really need the money. And everyone was buzzing. So now I enjoyed it, man. Yeah, man. You're enjoying yourself. I can't lie. Man City are doing you proud as well, fighting on three fronts. You know, you still got the treble on the cards and you still got the free Pete on the cards. Um, let's talk about Man City a bit, Steve, and, and and how you're feeling right now leading up to the end of the season, still in the Champions League, still in the FA Cup. Advantage City in the Premier League, in my opinion, heading into the game Wednesday night. Etihad, Arsenal, something I put as the Premier League final. I feel like if City win it, um, the Premier League will be yours. But how, how are you feeling about it all? Yeah, well, I mean, you know me, I, I, I watch a lot of football and I don't react to game by game. I don't, I don't, I don't think like, oh, it's over because City drew up Forest or we're gonna win it because we put seven past Leipzig. I, I I go on feelings and I know people, a, a lot of the younger ones don't get it, but when when you get a little bit older and you watch as many games as I do, you can get a feeling by watching your team that you know when 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 they're at it. And the last few title races have been draining. You know, you've seen it on the big six, they've been they've been hard, you know, you don't enjoy your football. And um, Arsenal, you know, we we went at the races middle of the season. We had a, a we, beginning of the season. They didn't know what to do with Haaland, and we did okay. Then we had a little lull in the middle where um, we wasn't quite at the races, and early wasn't getting the service, and it looked a bit disjointed. And Pep wasn't quite, you know, doing what he needed to do. And then all of a sudden, it all kicked into gear, and 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 the players looked totally different. Ruben Diaz coming back was massive. Jack Grealish's form, I think with yeah. Cancelo going and Nathan Aki behind him, gives Grealish a little bit more space. I think he was finding it tough when it, when, when Cancelo was right up his ass and he's giving him the ball like two yards from the goal and in not enough space. Now Nathan will just get the ball down, zip it into him. Grealish can go inside, outside. Um, Riyad Mahrez, you know, wasn't cutting in and, and, and doing the crossing. He was, he was a bit greedy and it just looked a bit disjointed. But, you know, I said it outside the Emirates, you know, about the shark, and it, and it's been a bit of a laugh between City and Arsenal fans. I mean, you've had a few sharks sent to your DM. I have, Robbie, I, have. I think Robbie's blocked me now because Jaws was on last night, so I sent him a bit of that. Premzy, <laughs> uh, Premzy is just ill with it, but that was just my own little way of <clears throat> trying to crank it up a little notch on my friends. You know what I mean? Because I know that when your mates are in your head about Liverpool and that last year, it can get to you a little bit. You know what I mean? And um, no, what, what's happened the last few weeks has really opened the door for us. You know what I mean? I thought you might lose at Liverpool. I think a lot of City fans did. Mm -hmm. uh, but to drop points at West Ham, drop points against Southampton and Liverpool, six points in the last running, to drop six points, it's, you've still got your noses in front, but you, you not many teams do that against Man City and survive, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I said it, I was on City Extra yesterday and I described it as when I used to play games, you know, as a big fan of consoles back in the day, N64, Zelda or Mario. And 
you know, back in the day, you needed a memory card. And if you didn't have a memory card, you, if you reached the final boss and, and you have no lives left, literally, that's it. That's how I feel with Arsenal. I feel like we've gone into the final boss. We've lost the lives that we had in our back pocket. It's our final life now. Wednesday, it's, it's in my opinion, it's, it's do or die. It's now or never because I, if Man City win it, I think Man City take it home. If we get a draw out of it, I think it still keeps it competitive. It, 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 there's still something there. And then, and then you go to Fulham away before um, we welcome Chelsea next week to the Emirates. And all I can do is, is keep my fingers crossed if we do get a draw at the Etihad and, and hope that City drop points somewhere else down the line. Because, you know, when I look at your, your, your last five, six years, there's only one run in where you've managed to kind of win every single game. There has been drop points here and there. Yeah. You do look like a a well-oiled machine again you mentioned it you know start of the season midway through it looked like you were still finding your feet with Haaland in there a, a different type of striker that, you, that you've become used to over the years and even with that look, look at what he's done he, he's matched the Premier League record he's broken the record for the most goals in in a season in all competitions from a Premier League player talk to me about Haaland a bit and, and you know the impact he's had coming in <laughs> well listen the guy is a superstar and to get him for the amount of money we got him for, <clears throat> we know he's a City fan. He's just come to the club and just embraced it. I mean, I didn't realise how good he was. And um, he, he, you know, in, in your, you've seen it with Thierry Henry and people like that. You get up in the morning, match day, and you think, I'm going to go watch Thierry Henry today. Yeah. You get that little buzz. And it's the same with Haaland. We're going to watch a big early today. And in Bayern Munich the other night, he missed that pen. Mm-hmm. I said to Dap, so I went, that's made him angry, that now watch. Yeah. Straight away, bang, goal, shut up, bang. And that's the levels we're at now with him. I never thought he'd replace Aguero, but the way this guy's going on, he's a different striker. He's, he's a throwback to the old monster strikers that we used to have. Yeah. But them kind of strikers used to get long balls played up to him. He isn't. He's just... He's, he, he, his game is off the ball. The FA Cup semi-final the other day, he made a run. He took the centre-back wide and Riyad Mahrez ran straight through the middle of the pitch and put yeah. it in the bottom corner. Yeah. That's because of Haaland, that, because they're worrying about him. And you see him off the ball, he's wrestling with people at the Emirates against Arsenal. Gabriel, he was fighting with him, you know what I mean? He's he's, he's a different animal and just so glad we got him. And, uh, you know, all these people, oh, he makes you worse. People, I, I don't know where these people get the fucking brains from, mate. <laughs> and it's like, are they mad? Are you mad? <laughs> if he's playing for Liverpool or Man United in, it, in them numbers, there's documentaries on the TV about him every week. You know what I mean? Because it's Man City, there's always something. Oh, well, he's going to leave in a couple of years or he's got a release clause. It's all bollocks, man. At the end of the day, City fans know the score. We've got the best number nine in the world and he plays for us and he absolutely adores the club and the fans. So we're in dreamland with him. And like you say, if he can get this season, can get us over the line in these competitions, then what a signing, man. Yeah, I mean, look at what he's done already. I mentioned at the start of the show, trebles on the cards, free peats on the cards. And with all of that, you've got a striker that at the same time will, will be breaking the Premier League record. He's already matched it with, what, how many, eight games to go? Um, but have you seen, he's played more games this season than anywhere he's played. Pep Guardiola's managed in mint. Don't forget, he takes him off after he scores two. He scored five yeah. goals in 50 minutes, takes him off. It's not, yeah. like, it's not like we need to flog him and we need every ounce out of him. Pep's thinking, you know what, you've done your job, I keep you hungry, you come off. Is he going to be upset at coming off? Of course he is, he's a young kid, but the fire's still burning deep in him. He comes off, he's angry, next game, he's on it again. But Pep's managing him right, you know what I mean? Pep's not bleeding him dry. You see these superstars go to these leagues and they can they can get burnt out, you know what I mean? They can they can go through gaps in, in, in the season where they don't do out. He's been consistent because of the way Pep's managed him. We've got Alvarez underneath him who can come in, you know, and, and score the goals as well. So, Pep Guardiola knows what he's doing. That's why he's the best in the world. And, and, and at the minute, you know, like you said, we're purring right now and uh, life's good on the blue side of Manchester. Yeah, listen, I, I know what you mean. I mean, when you when you look at Haaland and what he might achieve with Manchester City this season, if it is a treble, if it is a free peat, when he does break the Premier League record with all of that included, he must be a candidate for the Ballon d'Or this year as well. I think the only one that, you know, <coughs> Messi to claim to it is Messi. And obviously <laughs> Messi, the World Cup, massive moment. It caps off a brilliant career for him. I'd love him. I'd love Messi to, to get one more Ballon d'Or under his belt just to 
you know, gloss over the debate a, a little bit more in terms of who's the greatest of this generation and, and all time and all of that. But Haaland would deserve it. Uh, Haaland, in my yeah. opinion, would deserve it. Ooh, ooh, winning the treble, being part of the free peat and breaking Premier League records. And the Premier League is the, the, the best league in the best. world at the moment. So, No, I'm he sure will, he will really deserve agree. it. Um, definitely, we agree. But, you know, um, City fans are just, we're just enjoying it. You know, you're not seeing many City fans talking about trebles. We don't, we don't, we're not talking about them. We're taking one game at a time. We, we, we were way out the title race a few months ago. Everyone was saying it was Arsenal's. We said, look, don't sleep on us. We're going to keep coming and coming. And they've been ruthless. And like you say, we've managed it well. And there's a bit of an argument, like a lot of Arsenal fans said, um, yeah, but we, we're out of every competition now. We got one game a week. And I said, that's the worst you can happen. Because mm. when I sit on the big six, I always talked about rhythm. Yeah. yeah. And the rhythm, when you get the rhythm, you want to be playing every three days. Mm -hmm. The invincible team had rhythm. You know, I remember Gail Cleese saying, we played every three days and we loved it. And yeah. that's the same with City. You think Arsenal, you turn up at Liverpool, yeah? You get you get humbled to all. You've got a week then on the training ground, stewing on it, thinking about it. Then you go to put it right. West Ham, turn up, happens again. You've got another week to think about it. You go to Southampton at home, you free one down. You get it yeah. back to free all. Then you go to Man City. You know, if you fell off a horse tomorrow and hurt your ass, you want to get back on the horse and ride off and make sure you're all right. You don't want to sit there and scratch your ass all week telling you everyone how sore it is. <laughs> and then that's what it is. And, oh, and, and that's why it's, it's got the rhythm, man. We went to Bayern Munich. We got the win at Bayern Munich and we went to Wembley. We rested players at Wembley. Johnny Stones, Kevin De Bruyne, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Edison, we all rested them. Got the, some players who were going to be important in the title and got minutes under the belts. Now we're moving on to the Arsenal game in good shape. And this is what I'm saying. We... It's all about managing it. And people say, yeah, but City are in all these competitions. Yeah, but City's been in all these competitions for the last five years. We, we yeah. It's nothing new. You know, we, we get to the semi-final last few years, the final. So it's not like it's, it's uncharted waters for us. We know what we're doing. You know what I mean? Last year, we was in bad shape. We had Laporte playing with injections. Fernandinho at right back and centre back. And we limped over the line. This season, you know, Nathan's just got injured, unfortunately. But at Laporte's there. You know, Calvin Phillips is fresh. Alvarez is fresh. Riyad's fresh. You know, we, we, we're not looking too bad. Yeah, Riyad just coming off a hat-trick as well. So I'm sure he'll probably be starting the game after that one. He'll probably drop um, him. Probably drop him. <laughs> you don't know what Pep's going to do. No, um, I think he'll drop him. I, don't, I think he'll drop him and play Bernardo Silva. I think Bernardo Silva's energy on that side is important. I think Riyad, you know, if Riyad can come on near the death, if we need a goal or... If we if we've got them on the ropes, I think Riyad coming Riyad Mahrez coming on with twenty minutes to go, you, you don't want to be seeing that as a fullback. Yeah, hundred hundred percent. Um, let's talk about Arsenal a bit, Steve. Actually, before we talk about Arsenal, you mentioned Nathan Ake. Is he definitely out then, or is yeah. this? Oh, he's yeah. definitely out. Okay, I think he's going to play Laporte. Um, uh, that for me is the is 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 the place where if Arsenal want to get any joy, Saka's got a got to be on it. And yeah. B's got to be brave and go at Laporte. Um, Kingsley Coleman the other night went at um, Nathan, but there was no final product. And, and, and what I think, when we're playing a back four, when we've got the all back four, all centre-backs, I think a lot of the mindset is defence. And a lot of the mindset is get the ball into the lads in the middle, let them attack. We just got to defend. And we look solid, you know what I mean? We look, we look solid. Um, Nathan against Saka has been brilliant. Yeah. You know, uh, so that's a miss. But Laporte, he's seen his ass. He wants to leave. He's not getting games. Well, the only way to put yourself in the shop window is to come in in these important games, do what you do. And then, you know, I think everyone will say, yeah, he's done his business. He won the trophies and, and he left. Yeah, let's let's talk about Arsenal now, Steve, because you're someone who over the years saw something in Mikel Arteta. Obviously, you know, you've seen him kind of up close and personal, being Pep's assistant over the years prior to joining Arsenal. And I think everything that you you said a couple of years ago, a year and a half or so ago about Mikel has, has come into fruition this year in terms of looking at how Arsenal are playing, look at the consistency we've shown throughout the season, the, the level that we're playing at, the quality that, we're, that we possess all of a sudden. And to go from a team that just missed out on top for the way we did throwing it away in the final few games of the season to a team that's gone pretty much toe-to-toe -to -toe with Man City, even with the last three draws. 
if you add City's games in hand as points, you're, you, you'd be what? One point above us? One point <laughs> yeah. above us. So when, when you look at that throughout a season and not necessarily over the last few games where opposition fans as an argument bottled it, were choking and all of that. When you look at it across a season, to be one point behind um, this Manchester City side, we've come on so much on the Mikel Arteta. Well, what, do you, what do you make of what you've seen this season from Arsenal? <laughs> I think he's done brilliant. I don't think there's anyone in, in the country that thought he was going to you know, do what he's done. Um, I always liked him and I always spoke to people at the club who I know and they always spoke highly of him. And all I used to say on the big six and people used to say, you know, Steve, you're only saying that because he's not your manager. I used to just say, look, if you can see yourself going in the right direction in small ways, bear with it. If you can see yourself going backwards, then it's time to go. And at the end of the day, to create a team capable of challenging Manchester City and Liverpool, you can't do that in one, two seasons. You can't. You can't do it. It's impossible. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to have bumps in the road. But like you say, last season, he was probably scared of changing certain people because they were waiting for him to fall and he had no credit in the bank. This season of what he's done, he's got credit in the bank. And if Arsenal fall short this season, it's 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 only because they came up against a monster in Manchester City, not because anything Mikel done. But... It's a learning curve. We fell short in the Champions League and I believe we fell short and we learn from it. And I think if Arsenal fall short, they learn from it. Look, to we was on the big six show. Tony was singing Antonio and saying how embarrassing Arsenal was because they had Mikel Arteta and they had Antonio. And 12 months fucking later, look at the state of Tottenham as a football club, as a fan base, and look at you guys. Yeah. And that's how quick in football things can change with patience. And Mikel, he never threw his toys out the pram. He, he loves Arsenal. You don't get that now. You don't get play managers that love the club. That Conte couldn't give two fucks for Spurs. All he cared about was dope. And at the end of the day, he's ran off with his tail between his legs when the shit's hit the fan. And they're a mess. But I used to say to some Arsenal fans, stop worrying about Tottenham, man. I get it, you know. I get it, you've got fucking... Man United had Alex Ferguson and we had Alan Ball. But I wasn't fucking moaning about it. I just yeah. That's where we was in the pegging. But listen, things are good at Arsenal right now. They deserve where they, they are in the league. They deserve it. The numbers don't lie. Not because people have dropped off. That does, That's bullshit. Because they're there because they've been consistently the best team. But unfortunately, we're on their ass. So it's... It's all to play for. And like you said, people say, oh, you bottled it and all that. But listen, proper football people know, innit, what, what Arsenal achieved this season is yeah. fucking unbelievable. Yeah, that's all That's all they can say, really. But if, if, if we were to ask them, whose season would you take? Uh, you know, I, I know it would be Arsenal's all day long, obviously. Well, United, do, but... 97 points. Didn't win the league. Yeah. Imagine that for a kick in the balls. Yeah. Do you know uh, what I mean? Uh, this, is, this is what I'm saying. So... Listen, we're City fans, we're prepared for it. We, 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 we've limped over the line. We've got lucky, some say. We, we've, we've done it over the years. But we're, I mean, we're in a far better place now going into this game than I thought we was going to be. So on the blue side, we're, we're rev, revved up for it, ramped up for it. Got a coach greeting. Uh, Etihad Stadium can call it what you want, people. But at the minute, it's a fucking cauldron. And when this team's playing like it is and the fans are behind it, it it's not a place you want to be coming lightly. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um and I know how Liverpool fans have been feeling over the years because this, the, in terms of points accumulation and the consistency we've shown, this is one of our best ever seasons, comparable to some of the seasons where we actually won the Premier League. And yeah. to be on the cusp of potentially losing out to a juggernaut in Manchester City, it, it, and I look at the Liverpool seasons in the past, what, four or five years, a couple of them, 90-plus points, and still missing out on the Premier League title. Well, look, look how attractive a proposition Arsenal is now to yeah. potential players. Yeah, And this is where you've got to make it count. This is where you can't make mistakes. You have a season like this, you're in everyone's mouth. You, you, players all around the world and Europe and that are talking about Arsenal. Agents are going to be on the phone. We've got this player, he loves Arsenal and all that. All that bollocks. You just need to relax and the recruitment has to be spot on in the summer. Cut a bit of dead wood, tinker with the team. We signed, Nathan, uh, we signed Manuel Akanji for 15 million. What a fucking signing, right? Because last year's and we had no centre backs. We had Fernandinho there. Pep thought, you know what? I'm not having that. Johnny Stones gets injured a lot. Laporte can get injured a lot. Akanja. 
15 million. His, his career had gone stagnant at Dortmund. He's in one of the best teams in the world now. He's got Ruben Diaz alongside him, talking him through the games. Brilliant. Can play left back, right back, you know, and that's that's good, you know, adding to your squad. And I think Arsenal are, are not a million miles away from having a, a really, really fantastic team. Jorginho, I thought, was might have been a bit of a reaction signing. I think he just wanted bodies. Yes. Trossard, brilliant player, um, proved it. I just think you need a little bit of experience at the back. I'm, just to come in if Saliba or anyone's injured. Rob Holding, obviously, reminds me a bit like patching the defence up like we was last year. Um, ben White, class. Do you know what I mean? Zinner, yeah. Zinchenko, brilliant. Him and Turney doing well. So you look at the Arsenal team across the pitch and and it's dangerous, man. It's dangerous seeing. Do you, do you think this is um, the start of something in terms of a, a potential rivalry moving forward? Arsenal City, Arsenal challenging for leagues in the, in the next few years? Or I think, I think Liverpool are, are not going to disappear. I think they've got a big, big summer ahead. Yeah. I think Man United have got a big summer ahead. So I think it, it, it's you know it's going to be uh, one of four or five in, in, uh, of rivalries. I think we're all going to be playing each other. I don't think City are going to slow it down anytime soon. We're in a refreshing period. We need to replace Gundo, maybe Bernardo, maybe Laporte. Um, but what it is, is you're not a million miles away. So somebody like, I don't know, somebody mid-table, Brighton or someone, they're playing well, but they're a million miles off competing for the league. Whereas Arsenal was probably around that Brighton uh, spot last year and they looked a million miles off the league, but he, he tweaked it. He got two winners. Zinchenko and Gabriel Jesus, two winners. And, and that's all it took to come in. And people talking about, oh, we'll get top four. And Zinchenko's like, nah, we'll fucking win the league, man. And that's just all it takes. And if you can get more winners in that squad, then, you know, you're there. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think you go backwards from here. It'll take an absolute disaster class from Edu, Edu to fucking fuck it up. Yeah. Uh, he, he's got to be. That's why we got our boys, Tixi Bugastine and that. They're not stupid, man. They've got identify replacements ready to come all the time. Rodri came in. People slated him. Oh, he's not as good as Fernandinho. Fernandinho, that season dropped back. Rodri comes in. Replacement. You know what I mean? Jack Grealish. Oh, 100 million for him. He's a flop. He won the Premier League. And look at him now. He's a totally different player. Do you know? So, you just got to get your recruitment right, I think, in the summer. Yeah, Grealish has really kicked on this season. He's become so important. I mean, heading into this Etihad trip, I'm looking at Grealish and Haaland as the as the key threats, in my opinion. But uh, in terms of Arsenal, Steve, who who would be the one that you guys have to keep quiet in order to you know to get a positive result at the Etihad? Who who who's the main threat for you? Front three, isn't it? Martinelli, uh, uh, Gabby, and um, and Saka. You know, we know all about Jesus, and you know nobody would ever call Jesus to me. You know, I think the guy's mustard. I think what he brings to the team, the fight and the winningness is brilliant. And, you know, there's a couple of fairy tales that could be written in this fixture. You know, from, from Jesus and from Zinchenko, we just got to make sure we, we, we're prepared for it. I thought that when you played Liverpool, I thought Martinelli had Trent's card, mm -hmm. but I didn't think they used it enough. I think yeah. he should have gone in at half time and gone, listen, everybody, give me the fucking ball. Yeah. I've got this Trent on strings here. Every time you get it, look for me, look for me. And he didn't. And Trent got away with it there. But I'm just looking forward to the game, Turkish. I can't lie. It's like when I went to the Emirates and we had a bit of banter and that. And they were like, we'll see at the Emirates. And I was like, yeah, we'll see. But I'm confident in my team. You guys are pretty confident in your team. And this is what football's about. It's toe-to-toe. -to -toe. We played Man United. We were chasing United down. We played them in the, in, in the derby on a Tuesday night or something. And we had to win it. And we won 1-0. The atmosphere was unbelievable. Vincent Company scored. And... Yeah. This is what it reminds me of. It's a must-win game for us. You've opened the door now. We're on the step, man. We've got to get in. Yeah, I mean, you, you say pretty confident. I can't lie to you. I'm not confident about this game at all, Steve, because of the, uh, the, the form we're showing leading up to it and the form you're showing leading up to it. Um, but a few weeks ago, I would have said, and I did say that we should win the league from where we are. But at the same time... Well, the... you back a dog into a corner, Turkish, you can get bit, man. Yeah. And that's what you got. we got to watch. And I know we, we're very experienced with that. We know. And I don't think we will do that. I think we will be... I think you've got to come and get us a little bit. You've got to be brave. But I think Bayern Munich tried that and it only takes that fucking monster up front to get through. And he's not missing, man. He's not yeah. missing. 
Yeah, that, and that's the problem. It just feels like the stars are aligned and, and Haaland is due to break the record. Because if you look, I've mentioned it before, if you look at the lead up to the Emirates fixture between us, we had an eight-point lead, we lost to Everton, we drew to Brentford, and that gave you the chance to go above us. If you beat us at the Emirates, that's what you did. Similar leading up to this game, I mean, we had a healthy cushion, then we dropped points back to back to back. You know, only getting free from a possible nine at Anfield, London Stadium against West Ham and then Southampton at the Emirates. It just feels like we maybe have one eye on that fixture and, and this fixture is now here Wednesday night at the Etihad. And if it is having one eye on this fixture, then you are right. You know, it, it, now is the time to show that fight backed into a corner. Chips are down. The cushion is gone. Last life left in the back pocket. We have to go for it now. We have to get some Champions win this game. Champions win this game. Simple yeah. as that. Champions win it. And, you know, you, it's massive. It's the biggest game for Arsenal in fucking 20 years, maybe. Mm -hmm. It's big, you know, and you've got to, you know, it, it, it's hard for me to say you've got to stay positive because on the back of three draws, you're going to be fucking lying your ass because that, you know, it is what it is. I try and be the most positive person in the world. I try and GR fan base up the best I can. I don't see any point in... I try to be fair and real and... Am I worried about Arsenal? Yeah. Could Arsenal win? Of course they can. Yeah. Um, but I'm a confident Man City, 100%. Have I have got that feeling in my chest? million percent. And that's why, you know, we we do what we do. And, you know, there could be some tactical changes, maybe. Mikel's got something up his sleeve. We don't want Pep to overthink it, you know, mm -hmm. with the Laporte situation, because yeah. he plays Sergio Gomez. It's fucking game over, mate. But, um, game over. <laughs> it's... Uh, it's just mad, mate. But like you say, we're doing well at the minute and, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to the game. I, I can't wait for it. Before we do predictions, this, this thought just come, came to my mind because now you've got Man United in the FA Cup final and you're after that Champions League because it's the one that's eluded you over the years. If there's one of, of these three competitions you can concede, let's say, which one would it be? Would it still, because generally it would be the FA Cup in my opinion, but now you've got Man United in the final, that's taken on a different level of, of um, you know, rivalry, let's say. Which one would you concede if you had to concede one this season? Obviously the FA Cup. I mean, if we so, won the Premier League and Champions League and they yeah. won the Carabao and the FA Cup, who gives a fuck what they've won? You know what I mean? Yeah. We'll yeah. be walking going around Manchester City Centre with all big ears, with blue and white ribbons on it. And they'll be talking about fixing the roof and selling the club to the fucking uh, to the Arabs again. So at the end of the day, no one's asked me about Man United on our side. We're not bothered. Apparently, we're in their shadow, but life's good in the shadow. They've not finished above us for ten years, but apparently, we're in their shadow. So I say it all the time: they're a bigger club than us. Great, they sell more tickets than us. Great, we just got knocked out of fucking load of Spanish orange salesmen in Seville while we just done by in Munich. So. 20 years ago, I never would have thought that in a million years. I'm going to Madrid in six, seven days for a week in the sun with all my supporters playing the best team on the planet in the Champions League semi-final. They're watching fucking Coronation Street and the chase. So, <laughs> you know, there's levels to this shit, Turkish, and I'm sorry, they'd give it for so many years and they're going to have it. If they get final, they're having it. I hear you. I hear you. No, listen. I, I think you'll do it. I think you'll do it in the FA Cup final. Anyway, to be honest, uh, at this point, I think you'll do it in all the competitions. I think you'll win the Champions League. They need to pray to so whichever god they 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 pray to that Man City don't win that treble. Because if Man City win the treble and the free P, yeah, they've got absolutely fuck all to talk to us about apart from empty seats and we're living in their shadow. So everything they've been parping on about for the last ten years would have been gone. Do you know what I mean? So the treble would have been gone, you know, the free P would have been gone, but they haven't been, they haven't done the Centurion and they haven't done the formidables like we've done. So they need to be very, very scared, them lot. I think they need to go and get like lucky charms and shit like that and start praying, man, because Man City ain't going away. The oil ain't drying up. Sheikh Mansour ain't bored. All that nonsense they came out with. And now they're all begging for the Qataris. Oil money called us oil. Yeah, without oil, you're nothing. Well, I'm not being funny, you lads. You've had some serious dough ploughed into them, yeah? And they're nothing. They were a Carabao Cup. So bring the oil, innit? Bring it. Bring, bring the oil. <laughs> All right, cool. Steve, as always, we end with predictions and, and you are the home team. So I'll ask you for your prediction first. This Wednesday, Etihad, Arsenal, Premier League final. What do you think the score will be? Um, I'm going to go with 3-0. 3-0. Confident. 
confident and, and I, I completely understand why. I mean, I don't know if you saw the big six last night, but I've predicted a 3-1 Arsenal loss. Um, I just don't see us taking anything from the Etihad. You said it before, I think Arsenal can. And I think it's now or never, so they have to stand up to the fight. But when I look at the experience you have, the know-how at this time of the season and the lack of it in the Arsenal squad, I just think we, we, we're going to fall just short. Um, I'll take a draw. If you could shake my hand right now and say one point at the Etihad, I'll take that, even though that leaves you um, still in the ascendance. Well, not ascendance. You would still be ahead points-wise, but with the games in hand that you possess, um, yeah. realistically I look at it as you know I'll take a draw us. and I'll take a win um that that both of them are favorable for us I think um but like you say if you lose then phew, I just think the damage is done then I think the confidence from the players and everything and the fan base just drains to death out of everyone I think you know it's unfortunate but I just think that man city turned the screw I just I hope we start fast relentless get the atmosphere up and and and, and get the job done. Yeah, I, I, I do hope I'm wrong, Steve. I'm sure you know that, but I do hope I'm wrong. Um, Listen, I'm going to tag your channel in the title and make sure people out there follow up Big Steve. Um, We will have a show coming soon on, on either my channel or his channel or both channels. So make sure you're subscribed both to Big Steve and my channel, Turkish LDN. Um, And Steve, let them know where else they can find you. I'll put the socials in the description as well. <laughs> Mainly Instagram at Big Steve MCFC. That's where I mainly do most of my stories and that. And then obviously my channel's growing okay at the minute. If you're nice and respectful, we'll talk football on there. If you're a bit of a dickhead, then don't bother at Big Steve MCFC. <laughs> at Big Steve MCFC. There you go. If you're a bit of a dickhead, don't bother. Uh, Steve, it's, it's been a pleasure as always, my guy. Um, I would say good luck, but we need this. Yeah, I'd like to listen, mate. You know, you know, me and you get on great and. It's tough, man. But listen, it is what it is. It's you never thought you'd be here. Yeah. You know, big six last year was depressing for you guys near yeah. the end. Um, you've had a great season, and look, it's in the lap of the gods. I can't affect the result. You can't affect the result. All we can do is just pray. <laughs> yeah, that's all we can do. And trust me, I'm praying. I'm praying because it is a big one. And you are right. I didn't expect to be here come the end of the season, but we are here. Big credit to Mikel Arteta for that and the players. Hopefully we can pull something out the bag at the Etihad, but we'll see. Um, people, make sure you subscribe to Big Steve. Like I said, his channel is in the title and his socials will be in the description below. And as you saw right at the start of the show, this box to box is powered by NordVPN. Make sure you get protected by using the code AFTV at the checkout or by going to nordvpn.com forward slash AFTV for the AFTV special. If you're traveling soon, you can explore cheaper options in your destination country. There's a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you don't like it, just get your money back, people. So there's a link in the description. Make sure you show some love to NordVPN. Make sure you show some love to Big Steve. Make sure you give us your predictions in the comment section below. And yeah, love for the love, people. Steve, we'll talk again real soon, my guy. Always, bro. Take care of yourself, man. You too. AFTV brings you Man City versus Arsenal, powered by NordVPN. Shop for AFTV merch at shop.aftv.co.uk. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, and Twitch. We've got content for every platform, so check it out.